Friends and partners, employer branding experts and experienced professionals, welcome to the very first Old Work Employer Branding Talk. My name is Puyan Karimi and I am the CEO at Old Work and together with my colleague, friend and head of employer branding, Charles Sinclair, we are looking forward to dive deep into specific and requested employer branding, branding subjects from you guys. Twice a year, we do the Old Work Employer Branding Summit, and the event has grown to be a top-of-the-line gathering with some of the most prominent and forward-thinking employer branding experts in the world, really. With over 800 exclusively invited guests at the last summit uh, on the 2nd of December 2020, we received a lot of feedback. And among many other positive notes, our summit guests asked us for the possibility to dive even deeper into the addressed subjects. I would like to know more about this specific sub subject, many of our guests said. Could you not create a forum where we can dive deeper into this specifically? Of course we can, and that is exactly what we are going to do now. Welcome to the Old Work Employer Branding Talks, live streamed from the Old Work headquarters in Gothenburg, Sweden. Today we will discuss the most emerging employer branding trends for 2021 as addressed on the summit, the summit but with a deep dive into its specifics. Please, guys, feel free to interact with us with your comments and questions throughout the talk. You do so by posting in the comment section on the specific platform that you are watching this on. And we will do our best to pick it up and answer live. Maybe just send us a hi so we know that you are around. Or why not share the trends that you see from inside your organizations? We're very, very glad to have you here. Welcome, everyone. And welcome, Charles Sinclair. Thank you very much. It's great to be here together with you, obviously. I'm really looking forward to, to dive into these trends today. Indeed, I am too. Charlie, you're head of employer branding at Old Work. You meet a lot of our most proactive employer branding clients on a, on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, big enterprise companies looking to develop their employer brands, often in regards to a strategic agenda, but also smaller scale of companies looking to use their employer brand as a foundation for their future journey. What is, what is the most common question you get? Well, I mean, I, I think that when it comes to employer branding, um, a, a lot of organizations and companies, they really do ask themselves, well, where do I start? Where do I start with my employer branding uh, journey and work, really? And I think it's, it's important to understand that you don't have to complicate employer branding too much. It is becoming uh, much more strategic. We will talk about that here in the employer branding talk today. Um, but however, I think the most important thing is to understand that you have a current state uh, of your employer brand, and you uh, most likely have a future state, uh, a state that you want to reach, where you are well known uh, among relevant Canada target groups, where you have a strategically uh, correct culture. Um, and the question of, of where to start uh, is really all about identifying, well, what will take us from here 
to here and identifying those key uh, focus areas really and then prioritize them. So um, th that is that is really the um, uh, one of the top questions that we receive uh, in the employer branding teams at Oddwork. And, and do you ever come across uh, a more common current state, uh, a current starting point uh, at the companies that are, that are similar to each other? Well, I mean, I, I think that um, it, it all, we will go through that here today, uh, but I mean, what, what's really typical, I, I think every organization is really unique in that regard, uh, and it has to be looked at in that way. So you can't apply a um, a uh, employer branding strategy to organization A in the same way that you would with organization B. Um, so, so that will differ. Uh, just to, to give you the energy from the comments as well, we have with us, we have Malta, we have Switzerland, we have Germany, we have Stockholm, Gothenburg, Malmö, a snow of Malmö that is. So hey guys, wonderful to see you guys with us. Before jumping into the trends, Charlie, our audience might be interesting. When, when we talk about trends uh, and insights, what, what do we base these trend insights on? What data points uh, do you actually use? Yeah, so I think that's a really good question because um, when looking at this, obviously you want to make sure that this is um, uh, has a foundation in you know data and statistics, etc. Um, what we do when we base employer branding trends, and when we look at employer branding trends, we base that really on three uh, key data points. Uh, first one being that uh, as uh, Ordwork is both an employer branding company and a recruitment company, uh, we do have the great fortune uh, of conducting thousands of interviews with candidates each year. So we do get a lot of hands-on knowledge you know, from these candidate interviews and see how candidate behavior and ways of researching employers uh, change. Um, so it's based on that. The other one is, of course, that we are fortunate enough to work with any of the industry's most uh, proactive employer brands. Um, so we do get a lot of knowledge and insights uh, coming from there as well. And then finally, obviously, our job as an employer branding company is to stay up to date on the latest trends and, and service and research uh, within this field. So it's based on those three uh, data points. Perfect. So, so let's just jump right into it. What emerging employer branding trends do you see for 2021 and onwards? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, let's, exactly. So let's jump into this. So um, we will cover six trends here today. Uh, there are more uh, trends that we do see, and we will share them with everyone um, who would like to, to get that summary afterwards as well. We will cover six of them here today. And um, what we will cover here in, in this employer branding talk is uh, employer branding's rise on the strategic agenda. We will look into that and why it's so. Um, we will look into the, the uh, really exciting trend of the consumer brand and the employer brand converging uh, together. Um, then we have HL Tech's continued growth uh, and how it improves both the candidate and the employee uh, experience. And obviously, one cannot talk about uh, emerging employer branding trends uh, here today without covering uh, the fact that we see the emergence of remote cultures and how that will affect the workplace moving forward. Um, we will look into the real-time employee experience, how that is changing the game uh, internally for organizations. And finally, next-level employer branding communication strategies, uh, where we see a lot of develop development happening uh, right now as well. Perfect. And just to make that very clear for everyone listening in today as well, we will come out with a summary of the addressed subject and some extras after this live event, <coughs> event as well. So let's just jump into the first trend that we see, Charlie. Employer branding's continued rise on the strategic agenda. Yeah, I mean, so, so this is a really interesting trend, right? Because, I mean, we are literally together in this room right now. We are literally living this trend. Uh, how employer branding is becoming uh, increasingly a part of the strategic agenda uh, in many organizations. And this is not surprising. I mean, we do see a, a much more competitive candidate market today than we used to. And um, we modeled it up for, for everyone to see like this. So when you look at this model, one has to understand that you know, all organizations, regardless of, of, of uh, size or industry, uh, all organizations have some sort of strategic goals at the very top. You know, it could be that, we want to grow in a certain way. We, we're moving into new markets. We want to drive innovation in a specific way. We have uh, diversity and inclusion goals, so whatever it might be. And if those strategic goals in any way are affected by your employees and having a certain number of employees or you know juniority competence etc in the organization uh, that would be that would connect to the strategic workforce planning of that organization so who do we have to be in our organization to reach our strategic goals which takes us down to employer branding being a key focus area because employer branding is the focus area where you uh, identify how to attract recruit and retain 
uh, the right talent in the best way. So this is what we're seeing. And then the employer branding uh, guides uh, the HR recruitment strategies. So we see this happening in, in a lot of organizations. Um, and uh, as we can see on that LinkedIn research there, that 72% of the HR community um, um, agrees uh, on the fact that uh, employer branding has a significant impact on being able to hire uh, in the best way. So this is a big trend uh, that we see. And we uh, say that uh, employer branding um, will continue to move into the boardrooms uh, moving forward. Indeed, and just to comment on that as well, we saw a couple of years ago when we started developing the, the employer branding branch of Odwork as well. Uh, employer branding was seen as a often as a one-off action, wasn't it? It was we do this specific event or we do this specific initiative uh, in regards to employer branding, often driven by HR, maybe driven driven by HR and marketing. Yeah. However, now uh, employer branding is indeed in line with the, with a strategy when executed uh, successfully. It is in line with the people plan. Uh, it is a collaboration of HR and marketing, and it has indeed moved into boardrooms, been given respect and budget, also addressed at, at the summit. And uh, so the employer branding, uh, the empl employer brand rising uh, on the strategic agenda uh, as a clear trend. Now you're you're quite right about that, and 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 I, I know that we 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 used to joke about that that employer branding has some sort of you know history of being you know ice cream and balloons, um you know like you know the the the, the bean bags in the office and stuff like that you know we we are way behind that that's the way we see it that employer branding in itself it it, it it most often creates the result that you will have more engaged employees uh being a, a big driver uh which will affect your organization in, in a positive way but one has to understand that we are not working um with employer branding or we don't we don't focus on employer branding just for the sake for the very sake of you know being happy and have balloons and ice cream in the office if you will you have to understand that employer branding is a key focus area to reach the organization's strategic goals. So, Indeed it is. Yeah, so this is what we see. However, it, it didn't make me to look look too good with uh, uh, those uh, colory balls behind me and a flamingo on my right-hand side. But I mean, yeah. we'll just let that slip away. Um, thank you, Charlie. Anything else on the employer branding rise on the strategic agenda or should we move on to the next trend? Yeah, I think that one fun fact to know could be that if you look at, uh, you know, going to LinkedIn, for example, and look at the available job titles uh, that now contains employer branding as part of the job description, or even the job title, you will see a steep increase in that. So that's also like one one data point, if you will, uh, that shows how, how this trend is is becoming um, even stronger um, yeah. and, and will continue, continue to be so. We we believe so. Let's let's go on to the next trend, Charlie. You, um, yeah. Before doing so, let's let's uh, drop out a question to our audience as well. And 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 that question is: Do you guys consider yourself one hundred percent representative of of HR, or a uh, um, collaborative function between HR and marketing? And we'll uh, come back to that in just a couple of seconds as well. Yeah, because this is a really interesting question. And wh why we want to ask you guys is because one of the most emerging trends that we do see is how the consumer brand and the employer brand is converging. Uh, and what we mean uh, with that is really how prior um, you have had the consumer brand really uh, working by itself as an isolated island. Uh, and then you've had the employer brand uh, being on the other side, and they haven't really, you know, partnered up too much. But now we really do see these two brands uh, cons creating the organization's entire brand really converging together. And I think that uh, Microsoft uh, described it really well at the uh, last World Employer Branding Day that was in a digital edition in November, that, you know, a brand is our culture. You know, that was really explicitly explained. And that is really an example uh, how um, how these brands are uh, emerging together. It, indeed, I, I just want to jump back to, to the to the um, background uh, because everyone agrees on uh, many of our guests on the summit agrees on uh, many of the participants with their comments agree that the employer brand and the consumer brand is actually converging. But we've spent some time discussing this and, and going back to the roots. Why is that so? Um, and I just wanted to, to add the perspective also. I mean, we've heard famous examples in regards to uh, to uh, how, how you take decisions on, on when you buy something or when you book a hotel. We have this famous example from our first employer branding summit from Svante Randler who explained to us, how do you do when you book a hotel? Uh, you read the reviews, you get all the information you can before actually making a decision, right? Or, or how do you bear a pair of sneakers today? I mean, you, you go, maybe you go online, you read reviews, you read uh, everything you can find. You do your research before taking 
a decision. So why don't you with your next employer, right? And everyone agrees that you will, you will. Uh, I mean, um, tools such as Glassdoor allows you to, uh, other tools will be out there very, very soon. That's a trend. Uh, so you, you can get all the information you need. We all often call it a, a democratized uh, flow of information, right? And I mean, uh, this right here helps us uh, to, to get everything we want, everything we need. And I mean, Corona, the, the COVID-19 crisis has only uh, accelerated that, that trend. I mean, right now you have um, uh, employees sitting where we're sitting right now, or maybe at home uh, in front of a camera, being the only representative of an organization. And, yeah. and okay. with that trend happening, uh, the employer brand, that, that's the background of the employer brand and, and consumer brand uh, even accelerating closer together. And uh, just to, to give you that insight as well. Yeah, I think I, I think you pointed out really well, and, and you exemplified in a really good way as well. Because and and, and looking at the stats connected to this, it, it is interesting when looking at uh, you know the HR community and 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 how uh, we see uh, the connection between the consumer brand and employer brand uh, moving forward. Uh, so what we see here is that you know uh, organizations saying that there is a connection between the two today. Uh, you have thirty six percent saying that that's so. Uh, but more than half, you know, 52% saying that, you know, that will absolutely be the case in five years time. And even a third saying that uh, they will be the same uh, in, in five years time. So this is really interesting. It really point, points to, towards this trend. And, and with this trend, what does this imply? I mean, so um, we will we will continue to see. Um, um, I think you know, just bringing up a couple of examples. Um, you know, we will see more communication from organisations uh, being, uh, you know, both the employer brand and consumer brand together. Volvo, I think many of you guys in in the room has seen this one, the campaign made by People, uh, extremely successful, where Volvo turned internally uh, and did a campaign together with their employees instead of, of, of you know, doing it with celebrities and football stars at the slot and etc. Um, we, we've seen it there. Uh, it's quite interesting when you look at Apple uh, as well. They launched a, um, a similar campaign or the same kind of angle uh, during 2020 where you could follow the underdogs and the underdogs are employee um, in in um, uh, in Apple, uh, where in this campaign, you know, Apple products are obviously shown as the employees work with them, but it is from an employee perspective. Uh, and they even made the, the whole working from home thing, which was the sequel to the first one during 2020, when you follow, you know, Apple employees in their homes, you know, and the, the challenges of working remotely. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, it, these sorts of angles, they, they, they pop up. Uh, we have uh, If Insurance, the insurance company that uh, recently launched their new campaign concept, uh, which, which is called Buy Your Side, where they explained that this was literally uh, to uh, convey uh, their culture in a better way also with the consumer brand. And just uh, interesting, uh, different example to, to check out for those who are interested, the New York Times. Uh, the truth is hard. Uh, that was a campaign concept that was launched where you focused on, you know, the challenges and and the hard work that the journalists, being the employees of the organisations, go through um, to to um, to uh, well get catch the truth. And you you communicate that from an employer branding perspective, but it also goes into the consumer brand. We got a great question just uh, a while ago from from Katrina. Is, is this trend seen only in B2C companies or also in B2B companies? And I also want to add another question for myself. Is this seen only at, we're looking at big corp enterprise corporations here. Do we see this in, in smaller companies as well, the same type of convergence? Yeah, I think, Katrina, thank you for your question. It's a really good question. So, uh, no, I mean, we, we, we do see this in B2B companies as well. Uh, and especially, you know, with with uh, with knowledge based companies, if you will. I mean, think about, you know, uh, consultancy firms, for example, you know, engineering firms or wherever it might be, where really, if you think about it, the employer brand and the employees, they are the products and services of that organization. So it, it makes much more sense to communicate what you do and how you do it through the eyes and perspectives of the employees instead of just saying that, you know, this is the product that we have. You know, uh, why don't you instead uh, communicate the competencies of your employees and by that explaining the product and service? So that is what we see. And this is um, uh, most certainly valid for both uh, B2B companies, uh, obviously B2C companies, as you see as well, and small organizations.
Thank you, Charlie. L let's continue on on uh, on on the question. W authenticity uh, is you know, that what we're looking for here, or <laughs> or how would you how would you summarize it? Yeah, I mean, we put this in, and I think this is you know pre pretty great. You know, not not to you know bring anyone down that st still loves their Shutterstock images, but you know, it's just like you know the Canada market. You know, they see through this. Uh, you know, so using Shutterstock images to say, you know, like be part of our company and you see these sorts of images. I mean, you know, 99 point, I don't know, 7%, they will understand that, you know, those are not the actual employees. So that, that is another trend really by itself, standing standing on its own legs, but uh, that the Canada market is expecting authenticity. And we do see more and more organizations um, using and engaging in new tools that will create additional authenticity uh, when it comes to uh, the, the candidate experience and, and employer branding experience. Indeed. And speaking of new tools, let's uh, take a look at the next trend. Absolutely. Um, so HR tech, uh, you know, obviously a, a major one. You can break this one down uh, into many pieces, but um, HR tech and, and how this field is growing uh, is really uh, impressive and, and really exciting. So it's really uh, a trend that is focusing on, on improving both the candidate experience uh, and the employee experience. And just to like set the context for everyone in the room as as um, uh, we might have different sort of backgrounds and connections to HR tech. So HR tech uh, is human resource technology and it is an umbrella term for the software and hardware which enables automation in HR, both for employees and candidates. And we just brought up a couple of examples. There are loads of examples, obviously. Uh, but when for, if you look at um, ATS platform team Taylor, just as one example, they've done an amazing job with streamlining the candidate experience through their ATS. Um, and what's fascinating then is how they apply HR tech to help organizations reach um, uh, different goals, uh, not just, you know, re recruitment goals. So uh, one service that has been released um, from, from their side is to have anonymous recruitment processes, for example, which will uh, enable um, an organization to reach uh, their diversity and inclusion uh, goals. Um, so that's one uh, example. We also do see a lot of development within uh, employee pre and onboarding uh, where uh, we see more and more gamification uh, points being added as well. So, you know, you, you invite an employee to take part of the culture you know, and onboarding experience where they gamify their way to understand the uh, culture in question uh, before even having started, for example. So that is uh, an emerging one as well. Um, and just uh, we threw it down in there just to show you what, what's coming but chatbots uh, I think this is a fairly controversial one because I know I see that we, we do have comments saying uh, you know how uh, culture is key and and you know st stuff like that and that is really true uh, when it comes to chatbots uh, I think one has to ask themselves well will it create uh, enough of a personalized experience that is what we want to uh, uh, what we want to uh, make sure happens of course but they are getting better um, so just to name a few couple of of examples there, Brian. And just to set the HR tech in context, also going back to, to your first trend and, and uh, the current state and the future state of an employer brand. How, how we look at it is always, we, you, we have a current state, we have a future state, uh, what we want to be in regards to our employer brand. And we, we build a strategy basically and fill that strategy with tactics, right? And HR tech tactics really do uh, solve a lot of issues, but are those issues that are solved, uh, is, is that enough? Uh, does HR tech do all the work or not? How do you see that? Yeah, exactly. So that's a good question. So no, I, I think uh, we, I see that we have some great questions in connection to to what do we think about the use of machine learning tech for equipment processes. Um, and um, just to, to answer it like in an overarching kind of way, um, I think that uh, the way we see it at Oddwork is that um, HR tech solutions, they are in many uh, ways great. Uh, they will allow you to have more time for strategic focus areas and, and, and actual human connection. Um, but you have to make sure that it fits in uh, into the actual uh, candidate journey that you have in your particular organization. Uh, it might make sense to have, for example, chatbots in one organization um, because, the, the uh, for example, machine learning tech there uh, has become, uh, you know, good enough or like really good so that it works in that industry might not be the same in a, in, in a different industry. So I think one has to, to ask himself, well, does this make total sense in our candidate journey uh, or, or in our organization? Interesting. Yeah. 
Um, so, uh, and I mean, looking at this, um, you know, because I think what you what you were referring to is really like, okay, how should we look at HR tech? Um, and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and and I think that uh, when at the last uh, employer branding summit in December, I think Frederick Melander, who's head of partnerships at Team Taylor, he explained this really well that you know tech is there to help you. Uh, it's there to uh, certify and validate and quality assure uh, the candidate experience and obviously the the employee experience as well. Um, regardless of the quantity, you know, that's what streamlined tech, uh, HR tech does. Uh, but, um, uh, and it allows you to focus on your strategic areas and human connection. And, 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 you know, as we see in the data there that HR leaders, they, they do see this improving. So we think that we will see a lot of really interesting, um, interesting solutions coming up in the upcoming years. Indeed. And, and the final point there with uh, the allowance, the, uh, the, the fact that it allows you to focus on uh, strategic areas and real human connection. Uh, it's just super valid and, and it can be built up in that very same model as well. You have HR tech tactics and, and your job instead is to ensure that the whole process and the whole from uh, current state to, to, to future state. So yeah, thank you, Charlie, for, uh, for that insight. Yeah. Um, Let's continue also on, on uh, the next trend. Uh, before doing so, let's uh, cast out a question to, to our audience here as well. Uh, a lot of people from different uh, countries, great to see that. And we would like to ask you, uh, we are biased from our local market, obviously. So we want to ask you, what, what's the best HR tech application that has been integrated into your organizations recently? Please just share with us and we'll uh, get out the names of great HR tech tactics as well to our audience uh, today. Um, looking into the to the continuous trends, Charlie, what do you see? Yeah, I mean, so um, you know, as as we mentioned earlier, we, we can't have an employer branding um, trends talk without mentioning remote cultures um, and how this will affect the employer brand moving forward. It's also in connection to to the gig gig economy, if you will, uh, having you know employees not being part of the physical uh, workplace. So. I mean, this is this is nothing new to to anyone. I think uh, most people in this room right now uh, obviously has experienced this during during the last year, and, and is we're still experiencing it. But um, you know, with these tech, tech companies, you know, leading leading the front uh, for this, you know, Spotify just recently um, saying that they will let employees work from anywhere even after the pandemic. Uh, one has to ask themselves, well, how will this affect the um, the employer brand moving forward. Um, and we will not dive into like all the data that we have on this slide. Uh, for those who are interested, you know, look into it. It's really interesting data. But uh, what we really do see like um, in an overarching manner is that remote work has to, to in many ways been a great success. And you actually uh, see these this in, in, in service now as well, that organizations and both employees and employers that were more, um, you know, n negative or, you know, maybe, um, you know, going back and forth, is this a good thing or not? They are more positive today than they were when uh, the pandemic started. So um, one then has asked himself, well, how will this affect the employer brand moving forward? And uh, our take on this is that, well, okay, so we will most likely uh, work much more remotely moving forward. Uh, but but will this change how we look at belonging, you know, belonging to a company, the feeling of culture, uh, as we see in the comments, uh, and they are really wise comments. So um, uh, we do not think so, because when you look at, you know, all sorts of employer branding research uh, coming out in connection to uh, how the world looks at, at being part of an organization, um, you know, it's the, the, the connection that you want your personal values to be in alignment with the organization's values. And that's why you choose an employer as, as one thing. You know, those uh, numbers are so strong that we don't see this going away just because we can have a remote workplace. So instead, we see the integrated workplace uh, uh, coming um, coming into play, where it doesn't really where it doesn't matter if you're on the physical location or if you're in a digital uh, location. So, for example, you know, future town hall meetings, uh, they you should be able to tap in um, physically if you like, or tap in digitally uh, if you would like to do that. Um, so that that's that's a big trend that we see, obviously. Really interesting. And just the last point on your, on your slider uh, mentions least experienced workers. And, and I read an article on this just yesterday also uh, discussing um, uh, the next generation or the new generation, the upcoming generation stepping into work and, and uh, being uh, used to now a, a pandemic situation, a whole new remote workplace, a whole new remote culture. 
and that they actually might be the ones driving the need for the actual workplace because yeah. least experienced workers will uh, are are the people that want to work with more experienced people want to develop a lot and when we look at uh, which we do in many part of the cases the specific I target group IT we know for a fact that junior IT personnel want to work with more, more senior personnel uh, to be able to develop so yeah. uh, this is a big trend starting and the development of it will be interesting to follow for us and for our partners and for you guys as well it will be indeed. I mean, we'll obviously see a lot more, you know, coming out of this one. Uh, and I, I know, you know, from from the the, se the the next trend that we will be discussing, it's an effect of the of remote cultures as well. Just before stepping into the next uh, trend, Charlie, just uh, a second on what opportunities uh, does an integrated workplace uh, create? I mean, um, the the a really really interesting trend that we are not mentioning here on the the live uh, talk here today, but that's obviously you know if if you're an organization that can allow remote work, if you inter if it's just as normal as uh, you know being part of the physical workplace, that will allow you to look at talent uh, pooling and recruitment on a global level, won't it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so so if you are successful in creating a remote culture where employees feel as engaged as they all, you know, almost as engaged at least as they would if being part of the physical uh, location, physical office space, you know, then you will, of course, be able to recruit from all over the world, which will totally change the game and how we look at identifying talent. So it opens up massive opportunities for those organizations who are at the forefront of this. Indeed, and I, I'm just uh, guessing right now, but I guess that will be a major discussion for the upcoming years in regards to, to uh, employer branding as a whole, uh, talent pooling globally with opportunities that re remote cultures actually, no, actually create. Yeah. Uh, let's jump to the next trend, uh, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, so so uh, obviously in, in a strong connection uh, to uh, remote cultures, this is a big trend regardless really of remote cultures, but but it has been cat catapulted forward due to it, is uh, to be able to track the real-time employee experience. Um, so, um, so just to set the same kind of context for everyone in the room, what is the employee experience? Well, it is considered uh, everything really that uh, an employee observes, feels and interacts with as part of the company. And uh, we've seen um, the employee experience being an increasingly important and uh, focus area for many HR profess professionals uh, prior uh, to, to 2020 as well. But um, when we are now in a situation, obviously, where we can see a trend of remote work uh, happening, it will become, you know, much more difficult to um f for you know managers uh, to f to physically see um uh, how their employees are doing um so you know the notion of uh, sending out an employee survey once a year or twice a year you know that is we don't we can't see that you know happening uh, after this you know th that is something that is gone uh, you are now able to track this uh, in real time where we see um, really exciting uh, platforms growing out of this, uh, winning temp being uh, one of the front runners there, uh, where you are able to track the employee experience in real time. Uh, and uh, obviously, this has a lot of really positive uh, effects. And I know that you, you feel strongly about this one as well, Poyan. I do. I mean, I remember five years ago when we were uh, talking in, in different summits uh, on different places, building this uh, picture of the future. Imagine a future where every organization will have a real-time employee experience tool that will help uh, leadership, that will help uh, the whole experience, really. Uh, and that was a, a quite abstract uh, thought to grasp, uh, both for us, but for, for many of them, those that we talked to as well. And now it's just standard. And yeah. it obviously is, it obviously is. I mean, would you visit the doctor once a year on a specific given date? You would not. Would you uh, get a sales report on the 13th of March every year and only uh, drag your, uh, your um, base your decision on that very report? You would not. So yeah. why would you in regards to your employer brand? And uh, as you're saying, this is, this is just a must have today, isn't it? Uh, I mean, if you have a ambition for a future state, if you have a current state, you have ambition for your uh, future state, State uh, uh, HR tech tools such as this, enhancing the employee experience and really adding KPIs and measurement uh, to the very same uh, is just essential. Yeah, and uh, you're quite right. And I think that when, when as you're talking about when 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 uh, going on the, that employer branding journey, you know, if 
uh, one of the focus areas in that is obviously, obviously that you want to retain uh, your current employees in a great way. And uh, so employer branding is not at all about just, you know, attracting new employees. It's certainly uh, just as, as focused on retaining current employees uh, if they are in alignment with with your people plan and strategic goals, uh, and then you know th these kinds of platforms, they they are they become so so highly crucial uh, also for creating employee engagement. So uh, yeah, uh, we we see some comments on the new mall there. Yeah, we we love that uh, one as well. So the the new mall. Um, so yeah, we see this one um, being a big trend as well. It is. Um... And we've gone through five trends. The last one, uh, before rounding this uh, employer branding talk off, um, uh, next level employer branding communication strategies. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this one's uh, really interesting. Um, so when you look at the way um, employer brands are being communicated, we've seen like great development in this field. So really looking you know, back uh, just a couple of years, the person responsible for the employer brand in the organization um, was was at many times, you know, primarily responsible when it comes to communication. Uh, we mean uh, responsible, you know, for the career site and the job ads, uh, and you know, maybe the physical career fairs as well. Um, then we saw the emergence of social media, which shifted this game because, you know, just as you mentioned, Poyan, with uh, we we are all uh, researching, you know, hotels and products. Uh, online before you know booking the hotel or purchasing a product uh, we have the exact same of course uh, behavior when it comes to researching a potential employer so with you know these numbers with with such a high degree of candidates researching uh, employees in their social uh, media before applying for open positions that is by the way why you need an employer branding social media communication strategy um, uh, the the social media channels became a really relevant part for the employer brand uh, person in the organization to handle as well. Uh, what we are now seeing is that it's becoming increasingly um, exciting, uh, advanced, if you will, but primarily exciting um, with so many relevant and exciting platforms that um, have popped up that are really relevant for employer branding purposes. And you know, just to mention a few that we see in the picture right here. I mean, we have LinkedIn Live where we are at right now together, all of us. Which was um, a modern, which was a modern choice choice until a week ago when Clubhouse came along and made us unmodern. So we're going back to our communication strategies to see how that developed. Exactly. So you know, things are moving fast. But you know, as you mentioned, Clubhouse. I don't think you know anyone has missed out on that one. The the tap in audio app. So uh, what you do see if you scroll through uh, many LinkedIn feeds right now is uh, different organizations trying to understand like okay both from the marketing side and the employer branding side how can we use this as a platform for employer branding purposes as well so that would be interesting to see uh but you also have you know platforms such as twitch uh really interesting being the live stream gaming platform uh if uh, you want to reach relevant candidates there and and stack overflow just as another example if you want to reach the it development community um so th this is really exciting how channel strategies are becoming more and more uh, advanced and it's obviously becomes important to choose the right channels for your employer brand and that sheds light on a really interesting thing as well i mean just the the, the a jokeful example with with clubhouse right here i mean uh, a communication strategy isn't anything that you can just set once every i don't know three years and just live live with it has to be developed and and uh, you have to follow the, the numbers and follow the people in your audiences isn't that right because we're, we're talking to marketing here uh, in a love affair with hr yeah, I mean, of, I mean, of course, to be honest, like, of course, you can set that strategy, but it, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best one because you're like, you, you might fall behind. Uh, so, so no, exactly. I mean, it, I think what's important to remember here is that, okay, w when we ask ourselves a question, should we be on Clubhouse? You have to ask yourself, well, that very question, why should we be on Clubhouse? Like, will we be able to uh, reach our relevant candidates there? Uh, so you have to think about which channels you actually use. So going back to that, you know, going back to the strategic model, uh, employer branding uh, rising on the strategic agenda, as long as you move from strategic goals down to people plan and, and key candidate target groups, and then develop your employer branding communication strategies uh, based on that, uh, you will identify the right channels. That's our experience. Really interesting. Thank you, Chad. That that's thirty-eight minutes, eight, eight minutes right there. That flew by. Uh, so let's just summarize this uh, together as as well. 
Uh, we've been talking about uh, employer branding, emerging trends for 2021. Uh, we've discussed the employer branding's rise on the strategic agenda, where employer branding was often a one-off action a couple of years back. Now we see very, very clearly how it is addressed in regards to a strategic goal of an organization, uh, a, a strategic workforce planning or a people plan, and executed in an employer brand strategy. Employer branding strategy that takes off in a current state, aiming for a future state uh, filled with with tactics. Um, we've talked about the consumer brand and employer brand converging. We've talked about the background to, to that very question that uh, many of the people we meet and talk with actually agrees on uh, that is happening and how that actually actually can look uh, from different examples. We've talked about big companies, smaller ones uh, as well. We've talked about HR takes continued growth uh, and what role it actually plays. Does it take away uh, the whole work for every EB professional out there? Absolutely not, uh, but it offers tools and, and um, um, uh, really easy measurement and help along the way uh, for you to be able to, uh, to focus on the rest of the tactics uh, or the, the, the process as a whole. We've talked about remote cultures uh, as an implication, obviously, of, of uh, the COVID-19 crisis and the remote workplace, and also the implication that might have on new talent groups in, in the future and how that will develop. And just to stop right there, Charlie, we will talk more about remote cultures. We will get a reason to talk more about remote cultures in the upcoming years, won't we? Yeah, we will indeed. Um, we will. And uh, we've, we've talked about the real-time employee experience, which was something ab more abstract a couple of years ago, which is something very, very, very concrete now. Uh, and uh, if we send you guys away with anything today, that, uh, that's just a must-have. You have to discuss that question. That is a trend uh, for everyone interested in employee branding that needs to be addressed. Uh, last but not least, we have talked about next-level employer branding communication strategies, how it should be connected to the strategic goals of the organization, how employee branding plays a part in that hierarchy and how things happen so fast really and we really, really need to stay on top of that if our talent targets groups are there to be communicated with so i would say that is a summary of what we've been talked about uh, talking about today yeah i mean it is um so and, and we we will have there are some additional ones that we will not mention in the live stream here right now uh they will come out in the summary um afterwards uh however uh, for everyone who's interested in that Perfect. And guys, do you guys want to be invited to the next employer branding talk or the next employer branding summit, which, which is the exclusive event uh, that we run twice a year with uh, our with partners and guests uh, invited as well? Then we will, of course, send you an invitation to that as well. Then you just write uh, summit, EB summit plus summary in the comments, and we will add you guys to that list obvious as well. Thank you everyone for joining us here today. Employer Branding Talks will be back soon again and we're very look we're looking very much forward to see you both here on the talks and on the Employer Branding Summit. Charlie, thank you very much for an interesting discussion. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much and thank you guys for great and really interesting discussions. We are looking forward to see you again. Bye. <gasps>